The following is a presentation of TFNN. Sylvester Stallone knew his whole life what he wanted to do. For him, it was a chance to inspire others. Life wasn't easy. At birth, he was pulled out by forceps. It's why he looks and speaks the way he does. 1,500 agents said, no, you're not an actor. His first three scenes led to nothing, but he never gave up. Sly sold his first script, Paradise Alley, for $100. That money didn't last long. The last thing he had left was his dog. He got $25. That was rock bottom. He cried and soon after watched a fight between Muhammad Ali and Chuck Webner. Webner went 15 rounds but was pounded to a pulp. It inspired Sly and he wrote for 20 hours straight the entire Rocky movie. Tried to sell it but nobody wanted it. Too predictable, too sappy. Sly saved those comments and read them to himself the night he won the Oscar. Sly never gave up. One day, two guys offered to buy the script for $125,000. Sly said with one condition, I'm Rocky. No way. We need a star like Ryan O'Neal to play Rocky. Can you imagine? The same guys called him back and offered him a quarter million dollars not to star in his own movie. Sly said no. They countered with $325,000. Sly said no. They compromised. 35 grand, points in the movie, and Sly would play Rocky. Rocky has grossed over $225 million and the entire franchise over $1 billion. What's your Rocky moment, folks? What's your vision? Your unstoppable success? You were born to be a money master. The time is now to take massive action. Let's go over to Don in Odessa, Florida. Don, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Hey, Steve. Thank you. You bet. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay. I'm a subscriber to your service, and I just want to let you know that I sure do appreciate what you've done for me. Wow. Thank you very, very much. The Trader's Edge with your host, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the August 13th, terrific Tuesday edition of today's opening bell on the Trader's Edge, I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and I absolutely, folks, I mean absolutely, treasure your presence here today. My outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better money master and to provide you with tools that each of us need in order to lead an inspired life. Because leading an inspired life, folks, that is what it's all about. So let's go look at one of our tools. This is the tool I call cultivating your enterprising nature question if you could do better financially should you i think this is a pretty good question to ask yourself each and every day as you awake you know if you are in business if you own a business and you have employees i think this is a pretty good question for you to have them ask themselves each morning before they start work how about if you're a parent should you have your kids begin the day by asking a question such as if i could do better should I? Of course. We all know the answer, but you see, the questions really are the answer. And the reason that I say that is because questions control our focus. And if you ask a quality question, guess what? You're going to get a quality answer. So I ask you, if you could do better, should you? Of course the answer is yes. You know, I believe the greatest satisfaction of living life to its absolute fullest is doing the best that I can do with what it is that I have right here, right now, today. The reason being is that by doing less than your best has always uh, eroded the psyche, your own psyche, your, whether it's consciously or unconsciously. You see, we're creatures of enterprise. We're creatures of habit. And it's really kind of like the reasons for the seasons. You know, we've got the, the four seasons out there. You see, we're each day, figure it like this, each day, We've got the soil, we've got the sun, we've got the rain, and you've got the seed. You've got all of them. And the real question is, what is it that you can do with all four of those elements? You know, do you have the genius to make something unique from all of that? That's all life is saying. It's life is just simply saying, here's all the raw material. What splendid things can you produce from all that you've got in your possession? I say, go for it. Use your full genius. Develop your full potential in all areas of your life. Live an enterprising life. And remember, questions do control your focus. Think about how you can use it for yourself 
and all those other wonderful people in your life. Let's go check out these markets out here. Let's go check out the cultivating enterprise of the markets right now. Dow futures up 33 points at 15, 420. S&P futures up three and a quarter at 1690. NASDAQ futures up five at 3129. Russell 2000 up a point at 1053. King dollar up again, up 44 ticks. Trading out at 8182. A little bit of movement. Well, I'd say a bunch of movement in the uh, Japanese yen as well as the euro. We'll take a look at that. Goldilocks is back two bucks right now. Trading out at thirteen thirty-two. We've got uh, silvers up nineteen pennies at twenty-one fifty-three. Little rocket ship there. Light sweet crude basically unchanged. Trading out at one oh six oh six. Our call number eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. If you give me a call, we can most certainly take a look at uh, your stock chart. Number of email questions yesterday. Thank you so much. So I'll cover some of those areas here a little bit this morning. Uh, one of those, you know, I talk about the VIX and how close it's getting to the 50-day uh, exponential moving average, and that's where you get see some real destruction in the marketplace. Question came across the uh, to an email from a from a listener out there. Hey, can you use it on an intraday basis? So we're going to go take a look at the uh, ES Mini. We'll take a look at the uh, VIX in the 30-minute chart. Uh, had a question, you know, somebody saying, look, I'm just new to technical trading. Just new. Where do I start? If I have no, and, they, and the question was, I know nothing about a stock chart, I look at a stock chart, it means gibberish, it means nothing to me. Where can I just start? What are some of the basics? So we're going to start with a few clean charts out here today and go through maybe a, I haven't even put this together, but I'll just go through what I mentally do when I take a look at a stock chart, where my eyes are going, what my focus is, what it is that I'm doing, and just a, a quick a short order out here so that you can identify those tools as well. And if you've got questions, just give me a call at 877-927-6648. But let's go check out these markets right now. Let's go see what it is that we have going on inside the marketplace. Let's start off here by taking a look at the uh, Euro Japanese Yen. Very important to take a look at this currency pair. If you're watching us on Tiger TV, and I hope that you are, uh, you are taking a look at uh, the 120-minute chart. You're taking a look at two Gartley cell patterns that formed, the most recent one that formed here this morning. If you're listening on the radio or your mobile device at tfnn.mobi, thank you so much for doing that. We really appreciate it. You can always catch the archive of this show on Channel 9. And, of course, we will stream live to you. If you've got a smartphone, smart pad type device, just go to the home page of TFNN.com. Over on the right-hand side, you will see a button with three little smartphones on there, gadgets, whatever they might be, widgets. Click on that. This show will stream live to you. And what we're looking at here is the Euro Japanese Yen. It's a 120-minute chart. Why are we looking at this? Because this is the currency pair that correlates best to the direction of the U.S. stock index of the U.S. markets out here. And we had a nice little Gartley, a .618 Gartley sell pattern. This here completed again on the 120-minute chart. Uh, the time frame that it completed was at 7 a.m. this morning. Then during the next 120 minutes, that was coming into the 9 o'clock time frame here, we got a bearish engulfing candle. What does that say? That says that where the market is at right now, futures-wise, where it was earlier, if we see some continued follow-through to the downside, which we are not at the moment, if we do see continued Follow through to the downside. We have likely seen the highs in recession earlier this morning inside at least the ES Mini. So this is a currency pair. We've got a reversal pattern. We've got a reversal candle. Now we're just looking for a second opinion. We're looking for that next candle, uh, which will take us into the 1130 time frame to see if we've got some conviction behind the down move in that because that's a competing pattern with the larger pattern that's out there. So the shorter-term pattern, 120-minute chart, it's doing what it's supposed to do. It got into the overbought uh, condition, just utilizing that relative strength indicator, which, uh, you know, I'll share with you a couple of different benefits of using this as an indicator. It works for me, so and it works for me on a consistent, ongoing, continuous basis out here. It will work for yourself as well. So we'll talk a little bit because I had questions about, you know, the use of this, the relative strength indicator versus using a stochastic out there. So we're going to certainly uh, talk about uh, that and why I use that. Uh, so uh, that will be one of the things that we'll do during the next couple of hours. But in any event, right now, what we've got on the shorter term, on the 120-minute chart, is a reversal pattern. We'll see if there's some follow-through. If we go take a look at the, remember, when you're taking a look at a chart, it's so important to go up one level, down one level, just to get an idea of what's really going on. If we go up one level, that, to me, means we're going to go to a daily chart. So if we're using any kind of intra-time period chart out there, at least a 120-minute chart, you're looking at, what, two-hour chart out there, you want to go take a look at the daily. The daily chart had set up a nice gar 
partly by pattern. Now, it didn't get all the way down to the target level, but remember, that was just a target level. That's like uh, shooting an arrow, you know, and if you're shooting an arrow at the, uh, you know, you've got that little red dot in the uh, center that you're trying to get to, but is that red dot, you know, one specific spot, or is it a dot? Is it a circle? That's right, it's a circle. So the circle on the dot here of the Euro-Japanese yen was right in that 127.70 range. What we saw yesterday was a move down into the 127.95 range. So that was close enough for that dot. That was close enough for this 0.618 Gartley buy pattern, close enough for a 1.618 expansion of a, of the B to C swing point. The B to C swing point I'm referring to here is the low at 731, July 31st, I should say. Uh, that was at 129.32. The C point on this of an A to B equals CD down. That's what a Gartley pattern is all about. A Gartley pattern is doing nothing more than finding a pattern to go ahead and catch the larger trend that was in place. And that larger trend that was in place, one could argue, was coming off of the lows here on June 13th out at 124.94, all the way up to the move out there on July 24th. And one could say, I missed that move. Where is it that I get in? Well, where is it that you get in? One of those uh, patterns out there is the Gartley pattern. That requires an A to B equals C D down. That we got. What we also like to do is go ahead and put together our Fibonacci expansion and retracement numbers because we know that those are going to be areas or should be areas of strong support or resistance. In this case here, with the market moving down, strong area of support. And in fact, when those areas don't hold, one of the nice things about just simply maybe you can't call, maybe you don't have this uh, tool, you don't use this software package. That's re that's you know that's that's a that's insignificant because you can actually draw these patterns on your charts just by identifying swing points and taking a look at contractions and expansions. And when you've got two that are lining up with each other and they fail, what is that also communicating to us? What would that be communicating if you're coming into a strong area of support, in this case here with the market pulling down, and it fails? You can learn as much. In fact, quite frankly, in life, we learn more from failure than we do from success. In this case here, a failure of that pattern tells you there's a real strong momentum, and that price will move down to the next floor. And that's the cool thing about utilizing retracements and expansions is because they help you to design a floor. Walk around your neighbor. Somebody says, why? Why does the retracements uh, work? Why do expansions work? Why do these Fibonacci numbers work on charts? You know, the only thing I can suggest that you do is if you go walk around your neighborhood, take a look at the homes that you've got there, take a look at the ranch-style homes, and let's just assume that all of a sudden it gets crowded because of kids. Maybe it's parents coming back to live with you. Maybe it's the kids coming back to live with you. And all of a sudden you run out of room out there, and you've got to build another floor. Are you going to build it pretty much equal to, from a facade standpoint, looking at the uh, ranch-level floor? The answer is yes. It works the exact same way in the market. So when one of these levels fails, it goes down to the next level. All you've got to do is remember 0 0.382, 0 0.618, 0 0.786. Those are retracement numbers. 1.272, 1.618, 2.618 not a bad one to remember as well. And those are the three expansion levels. And that's what we had happen down here in the Euro-Japanese yen. That doesn't bode well necessarily for the bears inside the U.S. market because the direction of this currency pair leads the direction of where the market is going and it looks like right now yes on the 120 minute chart we're seeing a pullback but maybe the euro yen wants higher price we'll be right back who says you can't take it with you tfnn says you can with your mobile device and tfnn's live radio streams tfnn has put it all in the palm of your hands no special apps to download no subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. With the launch of Tiger TV. 
TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Mm, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, we'll look at them stars when we're together. Well, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, it's always better when we're together. It absolutely is. Folks, welcome back. And, uh, you know, in the pre-market here, not a lot of big names out with uh, earnings, uh, either after the bell yesterday or before the bell this morning. But a uh, couple of movers uh, that are out there. To the upside, you've got a company called Aerotech. Not a real liquid uh, stock, but the uh, uh, shares are trading up about 31% uh, this morning. Uh, you know, it closed uh, last night at a buck seventy-nine, trading out at $2.35 out there. Uh, so that's a, a big percentage mover. Uh, to the upside, you've got NQ Mobile. Uh, that's up about 13%. They closed at 1590. They're trading out at 1809 uh, right now. To the downside, you've got a company called Realm Wireless. So I had not taken a look at this stock uh, chart. Just simply went ahead and pulled it up. And so I want to go ahead and uh, ask answer the question. Good question. You know, for somebody that's just brand new to technical trading, or maybe uh, just so you have been technical trading, and just a way that I take a look at a uh, stock chart. But here's a clean stock chart that we've got. And the uh, ticker symbol on this is RWC. Uh, you know, and there's all different types of ways to be able to access a stock chart. You can go to stockcharts.com. You can sign 
signed up for the Nadex uh, platform. You know, you can get uh, access to uh, stock charts there, the futures, and so forth. So all kinds of uh, ways to be able to access a, a stock chart. Now, it's trading in the pre-market here at uh, last trade just fired off at uh, 278, 280. And so as we take a look at this stock chart, if you're watching us here on Tiger TV, maybe you're listening to the rewind of this by watching the archive show. The black horizontal line that I've got going across my screen, that just happens to be, I just identified where it's trading right now. But when you take a look at a clean chart like this, where is it that your eyes actually go to? Or where should your eyes go to? And the answer to that is going to be first look at the volume. You see, there's really four characteristics of a stock chart. Four characteristics, I should say, of indicators out there. And that's really what we're trying to take a look at. We're trying to take a look at four different indicators. Those indicators being speed or velocity. That's one set of indicators out there. You've got the energy or the angle or you've got the verticality. You know, those would be the types of words. So that would be a second uh, indicator out there. You've got the volume. You've got the real supply and demand. And then you've got volatility. You know, how do you measure volatility? Those are the four characteristics of every single stock chart. And there's all kinds of indicators out there. There's all kinds of tools that will measure those things. Well, we're going to first focus in on one of those only one of those elements right now, and that's going to be the volume. So where my eyes first go to when somebody calls or if I just pull up a stock because so we're taking a look at something that's moving in the markets, my eyes first go to what today's candles look looks like. You know, So if somebody calls me about a trade, I'm looking at what's going on with regard to today's action. So that's the first thing, what's going on right now. I'm just trying to be present with regard to the stock. But the very next place that my eyes are focusing on are looking for high volume bars. And I'm immediately, in my mind, drawing horizontal lines from those bars out there because those bars represent the real supply and demand. In this case here, when you take a look at this stock, you know, forget about the fact that it's not the most liquid of vehicles at a $3 stock. Assume that, but it works this way at really in all stocks, all time frames. Somebody, some group took a, a big uh, position in this because we had wide price spread and accelerated volume on May 9th. 524,000 shares. Look at how that just simply sticks out for us. Now, that's not you and me and uh, a number of individuals that all of a sudden on that same day decided to go ahead and buy this stock. That is some kind of fund out there. Now, the larger the stock, maybe you're looking at funds like uh, you know uh, uh, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, uh, Wells Fargo, different funds like that that are out there. In this case here, I'm sure that that's not the uh, case. But it, regardless, it's still somebody that has taken out a position. So when a stock falls, especially soon after you see that position. In this case here, this was on May 9th. We're only, what, August the 13th out here. So just a few months have passed. This stock is now trading down into that area. If some entity went ahead and took a position at that spot, do you think with the stock falling down and they're still inside this position, and likely they would be, do you think that they would most likely be the group that would run back in if they, because they're managing your money. That's your 401k money. That's your money that you're giving to somebody else to manage for you. And if some group or groups were taking positions inside this equity at that stage, that's why you want to go take a look at those volume bars. Because your question is, as the price comes down, is that group of people, those groups of funds, are they still going to be there to defend their position out there? Because if they're not, then guess what? They've probably gone from net buyers to net sellers. They're probably bailing on that, or they're looking at another spot on the chart where there's another group to see if they're going to step in and support the stock, and maybe that's where they come in at. And that's why you want to very, the very first thing you want to do on any stock, because this is all about capital preservation. This is about protecting your assets. And you want to understand where those high-volume bars are on any chart, because when something falls out of bed, that may be your only area of support. 877-927-6648. Be right back, folks. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization 
optimization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. With over three decades of commodity trading experience, Andy Hecht has developed a system that combines both technicals and fundamentals. He calls this approach Technomental, and now you can put it to work for yourself with his brand new service, the Technomental Commodity Report. In this weekly newsletter, which comes out each Thursday morning, Andy gives you his analysis of the market price direction bias using fundamentals and then specific trade recommendations, including entry and exit points using technicals. The recommendations in the newsletter are always based on stocks and ETFs, so a futures account is not required, and Andy will often use options in the recommendations as well. Andy will tell you where to get in, where to get out, and he'll outline the risk-reward profile for all recommendations. To get your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht while locking in the low introductory rate, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Mm, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, we'll look at them stars and we're together. Well, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, it's always better when we're together. We're off to the races. We got the Dow up 26 points. Trade out at 15,447. S&P up three at 1692. Composite up five at 3675. Russell 2000 up 26 pennies at 1053. Google up a buck. Apple up five. Microsoft down 31 ticks. Intel off seven. Cisco up the other side. They're up seven ticks. To the upside, uh, Os Osiris Therapeutics. Maybe I got that right. Up 72%. That's a, a nice morning out there. Must be some type of acquisition going on inside there. Trading out at, uh, trading up seven bucks at $18. Uh, let's see here. Of course, maybe they cured cancer. That could be the other thing. Let's see. What's their conference call? Uh, yep, it's a conference call to uh, discuss the interim analysis of its multi-center randomized controlled trial, evaluating the efficiency and safety of graphics. 
for the treatment of chronic diabetic foot ulcers out there. Well, that is having one heck of a morning up 72%. I hope you have a piece of that action. Apple up uh, 7 bucks or 6 bucks right now. Cena Corp, they were out with numbers up 450. Uh, Visteon Corp, VC, up 5% this morning. Uh, Digital Generation, DGIT, up 29%. That's up 3 bucks. That's having a, a heck of a nice morning. Let's see if we can find any news behind uh, this. I don't see any news at the moment, but we'll take a look at that stock chart in a bit. Valspar, VAL is a ticker symbol. They're off 6%. They're the leader in the clubhouse to the downside. Yum Brands off a buck 86. Rose Rock Midstream off a buck 60. Access Midstream up, up off a buck 50. Uh, you've got uh, Main Street Capital down a buck 40. Orbits Worldwide off a buck 36. Steinway Musical LVB off a dollar 29. So let's go back here. We're going to take a look at the uh, Realm. Uh, RWC is the uh, ticker symbol. I'll just stick with this stock here for a uh, moment uh, just to take a look at what their earnings were, what it was that uh, created the uh, scare inside this uh, stock at the stage. Their Realm Wireless, their Q2 net income, 197000 versus $1.25 million from the prior year. That is a, uh, that's a little stinker out there for sure. Net sales also down pretty big, uh, $6 million in net sales versus nine point three. So uh, they're getting uh, hammered out here. And so far this morning, what we're seeing is volume on this thing is 123,000 shares versus that uh, large position that was taken inside this equity back on May 9th, 524,000 shares. So the reason why you're taking a look at for those volume Volume bars, and you're trying to understand volume as it's coming out of an equity because this is nothing more than are the bears going to overtake the bulls? You know, how much oomph do these uh, folks here that were buying on May 9th, uh, you know, how convinced are they that this is the right equity to uh, be inside uh, of, uh, you know, at that stage? That's why you're taking a look at all the, the very first thing you do is, uh, you know, I mentally do when I pull up a stock chart, I'll draw the lines. You know, you often see me do that. And usually I'll draw the lines either at the top or the bottom or both just to get a range of where something will fall to. It's the one thing that you want to do, even if you are not a technical analyst, you're just starting from scratch. Go back to your portfolio. Take a look at everything and anything that is inside there. Go get a stock chart and go understand where the volume is. What you want to see is you want to see volume up very close to where it is that the stock is trading, not so far down. Because what you can do is you can go measure percentage-wise what that dollar amount is to the downside uh, because should something fall out of bed, that's where it's going to fall to. We do that each and every day here as we come on to the air, as we take a look at the stock charts. It's the reason why right now, while we know that the uh, bears have control of the market, they have for over two weeks now, haven't done much with it, no question about that, in a, a sideways market. But nonetheless, it's important to understand who has the uh, ball. And right now, it is the bears. We take a look at the New York Stock Exchange as the better understanding, the larger market breadth of uh, what's going on inside the market set. That we uh, trade each day to understand who is it that has the ball. The New York Stock Exchange, they would need net advancing issues today of about 1,430, I believe, is the uh, number in order for the bulls to actually take control of the ball. It's the reason why when we go to the ETF, so if we just now switch over into the ETF marketplace, it's the reason why with the uh, diamonds and why the Dow is so important. Now, you know, Dow only covering 30 stocks, but yet, you know, it's the headline number, but why it is so important for us to be paying attention to the Dow. And the reason that we want to be paying attention to the Dow is, number one, it's trading back inside the lower part of its range. So I've just gone over here to the diamonds because you can pull up a, a stock chart on the diamonds. You're going to get the uh, volume out there. And the real key here is if you take a look at the uh, volume bars that you've got, you've got several of them down below. So that could be both bullish to you with regard to being able to take the heat on a move down there. But what you're also looking at is the swing point of June 24th. And when you've got a low volume, a high volume swing point, I should say, which we have here, swing points are also another natural area for price to fall to or for price to move up to. So when you're entering a trade or you're exiting a trade or you're taking a look at stops or you're taking a look at exits and you should always take a look at both because that's how you determine the reward to a risk. That's one of the ways. You can also take a look at other leading indicator patterns, A, B, equals C, D, expansion of swing points. There's a number of different tools that you can use out here. But inside the Dow Diamonds right now, you've got 14 million shares at June 24th. Yes, there's also about 14 million shares on the downdraft from June 20th out there. So it could be the 149.88 that, you know, if you were going to draw lines with regard to where you ought to find support, and it's going to be dependent upon what's the volume pattern as price comes down into that area if price comes
comes down into that area is really what I should say. At some point in time, it will. Those high-volume swing points are the ones that get tested, whether it's the top or the bottom. Ultimately, if you're trying to buy into something, you'd like to see the bottom get tested because the, uh, that's the ultimate of tests, and you're looking for that to get tested on lighter volume. Why lighter volume? Because that means that you've run out of sellers or the stock or the equity or the ETF has run out of sellers out there, and those folks that were defending that position who were taking that position at that stage, they're more likely to say, okay, we're done with the sellers out here. Now it's time to start marking the stock up. It's time to start putting some more of our energy into it. We can buy. We've got more bullets. We've got more money that's come in from 401Ks, whatever the season might be, whatever the reasons might be out here. And inside the diamonds, you've got 14 million shares. So the price range, when and if the diamonds fall out of bed, is going to be in the 145.17. That's the low of June 24th, at least up to the high here of that uh, bar on June 20th, which is 149.88 out there. Right now, it's trading at 154.03. That was off uh, seven points. All these rallies, you know, are being sold. That's really the message of the markets. One of the messages of the markets with the uh, with the uh, now the euro yen uh, currency pair. That was also that was some energy to go ahead and push the uh, futures up. But we are seeing rallies being sold, and that should tell you something. Albeit on light volume. As Tom, you know, is able to point out to us, it's really a version of distribution up at the highs where you've got the big hands, the smart hands, trying to get out of those stocks. And when you see distribution at highs, when you see light volume at highs, that really makes these high volume lows even more suspect because who is it that's distributing the stock? Is it somebody who bought it at $145 and is happy to go ahead and sell it at 154 Now, maybe, you know, that I mean, that's really the mentality that's going on. If you were a money manager, if you were a big operator out there, that's really the thought process that's, good, that's going through. That's why you don't like to see low volume up here at the highs, which is what we, in essence, uh, have out here. Now, if you take a look at the diamonds, as long as we're inside the diamonds, what are the positive notes inside here? Well, the positive note is there's also... so so. So we know that volume is the very first thing where my eyes go to uh, That's that's uh, versus taking a look at what today's action is or what yesterday's action was. And so I suggest that is really being step one for you. The next place that I'm taking a look at is I'm taking a look at natural places of support or resistance along the uh, way. In this case here inside the uh, diamonds, a natural place for support that now has been tested. That's a very critical area for us to pay attention to if you're long or short. See, this is, this is irrespective of what your position is. And when you take a look at the stock chart, it should be coming in it with no bias whatsoever. The stock chart is here to provide you with information. It is communicating to you as long as you receive it, as long as you allow it to do that. Well, when you have these gaps up, which we had here on July the 11th, and it was a gap up on 5.8 million shares, that's very important. Yes, there's the thought process that gaps will get filled, and eventually they'll get filled. But gaps are your friends. They are a very important friend because what they can do is they can also identify strong areas of support and or resistance. In this case here, it's a strong area of support. Now, 5.4 million shares on July 11th. The problem is that if we take a look at, uh, no, it's not really a problem. The first time down to uh, test that out was on July 26. It gets down to 153.67 versus the low of July 11th, which is 153.71. So it gets below it on lighter volume on July 26, rejects that area. That says, okay, that is support test number one out there. Where's support test number two? Well, that happens to come in on August the 9th. August the 9th, you have the diamonds dip below that area. They get down to 153.33. They close back above. Again, the area being that gap up from July 11th, 153.79. That had 5.8 million shares versus 4.5. Yeah, volumes accelerating versus the last time down. Still not enough to bust it down. So it's held as support. And yesterday, guess what? Support number three, only 3.7 million shares on a Monday out, on a Monday, on a Monday out there, on a Monday out there. So this is a very important area of support. Why? Because when old support goes, guess what? Old support becomes new resistance. And so right now it's support. That's a bullish thing. But if you are bullish and you see it close below that area, that's got to make you say, hmm, something to think about. Why? Because on the diamonds, you're going to come all the way back. Or what's open out there, what's sticking out out there, is that June 24th high volume low out there. So that is the next area. If we went back to that uh, stock chart here, 
just as an example, just so that you can see how the uh, bulls and bears, I think the uh, symbol is RWC. Let me go ahead and I'll just simply call it up here inside uh, this area. And right now we can see it's trading out at 265. If we come back to those logical areas of support or resistance, remember we're coming to the last high volume wide price spread uh, day, which was May 9th. As I take a look at that line going across the screen out there, what I'm also to, uh, able to identify is I'm able to identify other areas of support by the candlesticks that are out here. And those candlesticks right here, you see this little doji candle. Some might call it a doji on June 26th. It also was a hammer candle out there. And a hammer candle, that is the very, that is what the most bullish single reversal candle signal that I know of that is out there in the marketplace. And that was followed up by a bullish engulfing candle on the very next session out here, which was on the uh, trading session of June 27th out there. That told you right here, this, this was very subtle, but yet very important as this stock had gone from the breakout session. This was buying a breakout. So if you were buying a breakout on this stock and you saw that May 9th, you would have put your line across the uh, screen here and you were looking for the stock to pull back down into that area. It did pull back on June the 11th with 40,000 shares, but no bullish candle configuration that uh, formed uh, out here in this three-day session or whatever you know bullish candle uh, uh, confirmation but you did get that signal right back in here on the trading session of june 26th and june 27th out there and there you could have bought a breakout what would your target have been would have been right here would have been that swing point uh, to determine any kind of reward to risk out here which was at about 374 now it moved above 374 where did it move to like I love folks, I'm just bringing this stock chart out here. I have not looked at it prior to this. I just simply went to my uh, stock charts to take a look at what was moving and grooving in the marketplace. And what we can see here, as it was building its floor to the upside, it made a move beyond that swing point. If we take a look at that swing point from May 17th, that had volume of 221,000 shares. It overtook that area on 301,000 shares. That was a nice sign on July 31st. But take a look at where it moved up to. The 1.272, and I don't know how this works, folks, was $4.04. And what it actually moved up to was $4.07 on that trading session, closed at 4 bucks out there. So that, you know, can you get a move beyond that? You most certainly can. Where are things going to move to? It's why you want to be able to utilize expansions, contractions, in order to be able to put all of that uh, together. So hopefully that is uh, helpful to you, something that you can replay time and time again. For those of you that are just really new to technical analysis, you're wondering whether or not you should really uh, try to begin to understand it. And there's so many tools here at TFNN with all of the contributors. You know, take a look at uh, today. You've got uh, Basil following uh, following. Following the uh, next uh, show, uh, following the Money Masters show out there uh, today on Tuesday, we've got Options Hour from uh, 12 to 1, oftentimes uh, several days, three days a week, four days a week. It's with uh, Larry Pesavento uh, out there. You've got uh, Daryl Martin, David White, uh, Andy Heck, Tom O'Brien. I mean, uh, you know, did I say David White? I hope I did. Uh, uh, you know, the whole kit and uh, caboodle out here. So, so many different tools and techniques in order to be able to use for your trading. In any event, let's go back and now start taking a look at the uh, markets out here. Let's take a look at uh, what is, let's go back to the currency pairs, see what we have going on inside the uh, currency pairs here right now. Uh, that's the euro yen. We've already covered that. Let's go take a look at the uh, queen bee. Let's take a look at the euro U.S. dollar, see what it is doing. Uh, this gave us a, a nice little bearish uh, configuration after it made its 100% move of a, a move, a little dark cloud cover candle. That was on August 9th. We saw some follow through yesterday to the uh, downside. That says to me that the move to the upside is over inside the euro, and that says that we ought to see a retracement. So if we take a look at our retracement, you'd go from the low out here on July 9th all the way to the high that was put in on August the 8th, your normal retracement, your dead cat bounce on this is 131.52. That's your 0 .382 level. Most likely you're looking at 130, even Stephen, inside the euro U.S. dollar as it goes ahead and it continues to pull back in the market. 877-927-6648. Right now we've got a quiet market out here. We can go barefoot water skiing. The Dow is down two. S&P is up one. Composite is up one, and the Russell down two. We'll be right back, folks. You take a hand.
hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed down a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Mm, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, we'll look at them stars and we're together Well, it's always better when we're together Yeah, it's always better when we're together Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up uh, 16 right now. S&P really unchanged and hitting it out of the park here this morning is uh, Osiris Therapeutics, O-S-I-R, having a nice 100% uh, uh, move here. Uh, this is after uh, they're holding a conference call, maybe going on right now, to discuss its uh, graphics diabetic foot ulcer trial uh, program. It's trading out at 2197. It's got some uh, huge volume behind this uh, move out here. 
so far today for this equity, 1.7 million shares. And if we uh, pull this back and take a look at it, we can see this thing had uh, broken out uh, back in uh, May of 2012. Uh, you know, this one is trading down in the $5 and a change range out here. Had some big volume step into it on the trading session of June 15th. We go pull this uh, back out here. Let's take a look at that uh, volume session. We can see how price came back into that area. I'm looking at the bar here from June the 15th. We'll go ahead and put the uh, bar uh, or a line across the uh, bottom of the sand out here or the bottom of the uh, bar, I should say. And, again, the ticker symbol on this one, if you're going to follow us uh, on your own uh, charting package, O-S-I-R is the uh, ticker symbol. And uh, this thing truly uh, taking off uh, as uh, price came back uh, to test out the area where it was breaking out. It did that around the time frame in the uh, early part of August. Did it with 248,000 shares going into 1.8 million shares out there. That may not have necessarily been the buy. You did get a nice bullish engulfing uh, candle that took place right here on August the uh, 7th. Uh, inside this uh, equity, we see that it pulls back and it tests this area once again back at uh, the end of August, does it with 108,000 shares. That was even lighter volume than the first pullback in the August 6th, so that's a nice little uh, test there on lighter volume. Uh, if we take a look at retracements and take a look at what it did from the high out here in June 27th down to the low, you're going to see the .618 number is 12.01. What it actually got up to before it pulled back was 1194. Remember, we're using this as a target, not an exact. This is like uh, having an arrow, and you're going to go ahead and hit that uh, bullseye. Well, the bullseye isn't you know right to the uh, 100th or anything like that. It's your area. It's a general area, your red dot out here if you will, on the uh, stock chart. Goes ahead and pulls back another time here. It does this uh, back in November of 2012, pulling back with 110,000 shares, nice little bullish engulfing candle, uh, supporting that area out here. Because on this first pullback, uh, quite frankly, you don't know if this is going to stop right in this range here in the $8 range or is it going to come all the way back to where it broke out. So I wouldn't have uh, been able to, I can tell you myself personally, knowing that it was pulling back here, other than trying to go ahead and decide to scale into a position, you know, I would be looking for it to come all the way back down to the bottom right around the $6 range, you know, where the volume bar started to begin with. Well, if you waited for it to come back into that $6 range, well, what you can see is it actually did that back here in uh, February of 2013. And then what's it do? It gaps up on the following, or on March the uh, 6th out here, with some volume behind the move, gapping up, getting back above that uh, whole red uh, or that the black horizontal bar going across my screen. Look, folks, this is the first time I looked at this stock chart. I've done no analysis on here. Just simply came back to natural areas of resistance and or support inside this equity. And then from there, it was truly off to the eraser because you knew you had another nice big buyer in here that was really defending uh, this position out here. And that's how you would go ahead and take a look at this. Now today, big benefits out here with this thing moving up with some volume uh, behind it. And how this thing comes back and whether it fills the gap or what have you, I'm not saying get in front of this thing right now, but it's just simply the tools that you can use in order to be able to analyze a uh, stock chart. Stay tuned, folks, if you're off to start your uh, Monday. Well, have a great day. Otherwise, stay tuned. The Money Masters show is up next. And I want you to remember this one thing, this one important thing, and that's this. You have an amazing power within yourself. And that power, it's so strong, it'll create a life of abundance, cure incurable diseases, build billion-dollar businesses, paint magnificent masterpieces. But most of all, folks, create fantastic, loving families. Thanks so much for being a part of the TFN family. Have a great Monday. Look forward to seeing you soon. What's the one thing that pulls people back from the breakthrough that they're moving towards? What's the only thing that really stops people from taking action? You and I both know the answer, and sure, we can come up with the reasons why we're not where we want to be, but the only reason that we don't do more with our life is fear. Or if you're an overachiever, call it stress. Simply put, there's something that happened to us in our past that's holding us back from the life we deserve, yet you and I are okay, we're here. So why should we let our past control our future? Exactly. We shouldn't. Hi. I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and when it comes to your trading and investing, I can help you overcome your fear of loss. Together, we'll turn weakness into strength with a system I've developed called Mastering Probability. I'll teach you how to make your money work harder for you than you do for it. I'll teach you the tools that provide financial freedom. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com, click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and begin your journey of mastering probability risk-free. It's time to become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past.